Greetings. Good afternoon. This is Sandra Hess, founder of DTC Wine Workshops Consulting Agency out of the San Francisco Bay Area. I have the pleasure of recording episode number 10 in the DTC Wine Case Study Series to get to the true ROI of why a wine brand like Cornerstone Cellars would outsource telesales to Vino Pro Teleservices. I have the pleasure today of introducing um, our audience, both Sonia Grabsky, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Cornerstone Cellars, as well as Donnie Varner, the Vice Senior Vice President of Sales now at Vino Pro. Uh, if we could go ahead and get started with introductions, I'm going to open it up now to Donnie. Thank you. Hi, I'm Donnie. Uh, I've been working with Vino Pro for eight years. And what we do is we do direct to consumer sales and we'd actually do wine club signups as well. Uh, building and maintaining relationships over the phone is what we've been doing for uh, for over 10 years. And we've actually made the Inc. 500 list of the fastest growing companies in the United States. And we just haven't stopped. We're actually in the midst of opening our uh, fourth office uh, located in Arizona. We've also expanded into uh, doing inbound customer service where we answer calls and emails for wineries with in regards to reservations, redirected shipments, uh, giving directions, lots of calls for directions. Um, and any other questions uh, that a customer might have. So we're when you see a, a phone number on a website, it can go to us as well. So those are the, a couple of the things that we do here. Hello, I'm Sonia Grabsky, and I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing at Cornerstone, and I've been here for about two years. Um, we are unique because we've been a, bit, a little bit of a turnaround situation. Um, we are small, 5,000 to 10,000, depending on kind of the year uh, for production, so we're what we consider a boutique winery, um, primarily direct to consumers, so we do not have much of a three tier distribution, um, we are really focused on um, sales in the direct channel. Um, this last year has been a little bit challenging for us because we've actually been a full year without a tasting room. We made a decision to leave a tasting room because of construction. It wasn't really the best place for us to be. And uh, we've got two new tasting rooms opening up in the next six weeks. We're very excited to be able to kind of turn that pipeline back on and start getting new customers back in the door. Well, congratulations. A very exciting opportunity for Cornerstone. I, I remember visiting you all down in downtown Yauntville, so excited to check out your new visitor spaces. Well, let's set the stage here. You know, what's happening with direct-to-consumer wine sales across the nation? Um, it's a very exciting time as we continue to watch the fastest growing sales channel in the wine industry continue to um, evolve. And we tend to see about 9 to 15 percent of the total DTC pie coming from the telesales and website side. Um, some of our clients, when we get in, dig into their data sets, depending on the region and maturity of the brand, we see upwards of even 20% now coming through telesales uh, and web. So it's an exciting opportunity for us today to talk about the why behind this uh, increase in, in sales. So one, we see many brands, you know, not just the big guys, but big and small, focused on building true 360 degree customer views. So we know now that omni-channel marketing is everything. We see CMOs with more marketing budget than CTOs across the, U the US today. Consumer engagement, um, customer journey mapping, really important priorities for any type of uh, retail style uh, business. In And that is, what is the true ROI of a wine brand of any size using telesales to, first of all, grow direct to consumer sales and then also retain brand loyalists? And so I'm really excited to talk to two experts here in today's DTC wine case study. Let's start off with the why behind Cornerstone Sellers selecting Vinopro. I'm going to open it up to you, Sonia, with that first question. So when I first came to Cornerstone, actually as a consultant about two years ago, they didn't have that channel. So naturally for me, I knew that I needed to open up the telesales marketing channel. It's an incredible channel. I've been working it for 10 years, so I'm very much an early adopter to this channel. And I've done it from the largest companies I implemented at Constellation all the way down to very small little brands, you know, 3,000 cases, you know, even smaller than uh, than um, Cornerstone. So for me, it was really, it was a no-brainer. I could literally 
make a phone call, call Vino Pro. I, like I said, I've worked with the Constellation Terlato over the last 10 years. And so they're my first go-to uh, saying, hey, I've got a small little brand. Will you take me on? And it's just an instant way to get cash flow into the business and also build relationships with the customer. Wonderful. So 10 years uh, working with IntelliSales and, and the online industry. So you've got some great stories to share. I can't wait to hear more. Yeah, we work from uh, brands, you know, of all shapes and sizes. Um, we have found that generally wineries with a thousand club members or more is really sort of the the target for us as far as what is uh, what is the most successful with a phone channel. Um, but you can be a little bit smaller, or you can be a large multi-branded winery and and do well. But if you're not making phone calls, uh, you're you're definitely missing out. Um, when it comes to the how, how would be no pro. Uh, team there helps wineries like Cornerstone Sellers grow the direct-to-consumer uh, sales division and retain those little customers. Can you explain to us what your team looks like at Vino Pro and then some of the solution services you provide? Um, yeah, so we do mostly outbound calling, um, but we also have services like inbound, like I mentioned before. We also do wine club signups. And in Cornerstone's case, they were actually transitioning from one tasting room to another and didn't have a tasting room at all. So we were able to basically make those sales uh, for Cornerstone when they did they couldn't make sales in the tasting room. But for other partners, it's it's just as well. I mean, the, all the sales that we make are incremental. So every sale that we are making is not a sale that happened in the tasting room or online. Um, it's all 100% incremental, including the wine club signups. So we have signed up thousands of wine clubs a year. Uh, for different winery partners, and we're able to grow their wine club as well as phone sales. Mm -hmm. So, Sonia, what are some, I guess, keys to success? You know, a, let's say a wine brand that is just at the beginning stages of evaluating Vino Pro or Outbound Telesales Group. Um, what are some keys to success in ensuring the Vino Pro team really is that direct extension of the tasting room or club team? I think this is a great uh, question and it's something I've had a lot of learning about and I think that I've basically put the formula in place with these guys that are used across the way as far as best practices. I, I think I try to pride myself on being one of their better clients. Um, number one is, you know, making sure that we can invite their team or we go see their team. We pour through the wines. We get them all the information that they need, that they've got a contact person that gets back to them on a timely method. But then there's the other side as well. There's how do we communicate this to our team? And a lot of times people feel like it's a channel conflict. They're like, oh, they're not gonna come to the tasting room or they're buying and they're starting to pick up in the tasting room. Um, they're taking my sales. They're not. And so it's being able to have a conversation and once again is that, you know, we, it's one big pot that we're filling up, um, the company's goals. And our job is to, you know, figure out all the levers in order to sell wine. Um, the other thing is making sure that they know who's working on the account because there's nothing worse than when someone comes into the tasting room and says, oh, I was talking to Donnie the other day and uh, he said that you've got a great new such and such and you know, I thought I'd pop by and try it. And there's crickets who are like, there's no Donnie that works here. Must have been some other wider. That's not what you want to have happen. And so all your frontline staff needs to have um, an understanding of how to talk about the person that is making the phone calls. And no, Donnie's not here on site, but he works off site doing you know, marketing. We just don't have that space here. So you have to figure out how to do that. The other thing is um, I'm a data collection queen. And so for me, every touch point that we can get customer data is it's huge. We need to be asking for that data for every single customer coming through. We need to be attaching that data to sales records so that there's actually the information when they're sucking the information out of our system over at Vino Pro that they've got when they had their last sales, they know they can legally make the phone call. They can see if they're a club member, they can see the type of wines that they like to purchase. And, you know, that we're capturing not just emails, but phone numbers. One of the huge successes that used to always make me laugh at another winery coming in is I would have people give us their phone numbers because they were with someone else at purchased. And then about three or four weeks later, I'd start getting orders, zero dollar, but the person was in my system. And then they're getting the first order from the customer, which is a huge thing. I mean, they just turned someone from a prospect into a first time buyer. And that's not happening in our tasting room. Mm -hmm. I love that story. Re-engagement strategies are everything. And, you know, I, I think about 
direct to consumer sales success and the brands that are really nailing it and they focus heavily on that re-engagement strategy. It's not that first sale that's the most important. It's the second and beyond and how you're capturing that data. Like you mentioned, Sonia, glad to hear you've implemented best practices. Um, and what I'm hearing as your words of wisdom is that training needs to happen both at the winery side. So somebody at the winery side needs to own the process and then teach the frontline staff on the proper messaging around this extension, this tail of sales extension yeah. of your sales team. And then two, there needs to be a training from the wine brand to Vino Pro on things like, you know, the wine presentation and running through the latest tasting notes and making sure that the Vino Pro team is a true extension based on that same brand voice. So, and this question goes back over to you, Donnie. What does the ramp up process typically look like when you onboard a new client? Sure. Yeah. I mean, the training is huge from, from the winery. Uh, it, it's massive. I mean, they need to know the, the wine, they need to know the story. Uh, and you know, we joke that, that these guys need to know what the dog's name is, you know, because we represent the winery. So when we call as the winery, the caller ID shows the winery. So we always want, we don't want to know every single story about every product that's possible. The actual onboarding, besides the training part and tasting through the wines, we actually have integrations with Vin65, uh, eWinery, and external, even AMS. So our on onboarding is pretty simple. It's basically a username and password, and that's it. Uh, we get to get full access to what the customers have purchased before, uh, even so much that we can see tracking numbers from previous shipments and help with a lot of customer service issues as well right there on the phone. Uh, but the most important piece is when somebody says, I had a bottle of Cabernet from five years ago, and we'll say, well, hold on a sec, let's look that up and figure out what wine it was. So a lot of the times the, uh, the, 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 the way we can log into their system and see what they've purchased is huge for sales and customer service. Sonia, back over to you with this question. So how do you stay in clear contact, uh, regular contact with the Vino Pro team? So I try to make sure that they know the emails that are going out, the special offers that are going out. We're sending them what's going out in club shipments ahead of time. We're giving them our release schedule. Uh, if something changes, I'm calling and having that conversation with them. And Vino Pro too is also very proactive in reaching out to you every month and saying, what's going on? What are the changes? What are your next two club shipments look like? So they're very proactive in communicating back to us as well. Along that same line, do you give them any directive on the types of notes, um, CRM information you want added to member profiles? So they don't typically put information back into the system, but they send notes over with every single order, and then we can add that information um, back into our system. And they're very good about giving notes, checking credit cards, adding data bursts. Um, if they see something's missing in the client profile, they're going to try to get it for me, which is great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, it sounds like the communication process between the two companies is pretty spot on. Obviously, Vino Pro being some of the best in the industry, they've got this pretty well dialed in. Let's get. First of all, and Sonia, now you being 10 years into the wine industry, really bringing in telesales divisions to groups like Constellation and on, can you give us, you know, your um, insights as to ROI that you tend to expect? Uh, from using uh, a group like Vino Pro? So I tend to expect um, a, a pretty um, heavy channel turned on. I mean, it's huge. Uh, you know, Constellation, just one brand alone was a million dollars the first year. That's a million dollars we weren't selling before, which I think is pretty phenomenal. And so for me, it's what is the average order value and seeing that, you know, we are doing higher than what we normally do in the tasting rooms because they've got more information and they've got more time to kind of talk to the customer, um, that they're doing six bottles, 12 bottles or more is really important to me as well. And then also, you know, are we seeing longer retention for club members? Are we seeing them data capturing um, credit card declines? So they're, they're my favorite to go to for handing credit card declines. If I hand someone in my office a credit card decline list, they roll their eyes and go, you really want me to do this? And it feels like I'm sending them off on a punishment. <laughs> and um, because they're not wired to do that. But the guys at Vino Pro, those guys are wired to be on the phone all day. And they're excited to make that phone call because not only are they going to capture that credit card, they're actually probably going to be like, oh, by the way, 
you missed your last two club shipments. Should we just go ahead and get those out to you on top of this month's? And so then I'm not just getting four bottles out the door. I'm getting, you know, six to 12 bottles out the door. So Donnie, back over to you with the same question. When we look at, you know, these key metrics from the tasting room, things like average order values, number of case sales, number of conversions to wine club. What are some of the key metrics that you provide your clients on the Vino Pro platform? Sure. Well, let me just give you some of the, you know, the, the sort of 30,000 foot view. If you are calling, making any calls whatsoever, you're getting 100% return on your investment because those are all incremental sales. When you sell a case of wine over the phone, that's a case that you wouldn't have sold otherwise. Okay. So I sort of believe in the good, better, best philosophy. Okay. Good meaning you should be making calls at some level at, in your winery, even if it's a slow Monday or Tuesday uh, to help have somebody at your winery making phone calls. The better option is to have a dedicated person or team making phone calls. And then the best, of course, is hiring a third party company like me that can do it compliantly, legally, uh, that has much better success with staffing, training, technology. I mean, staffing right now just to make phone calls is a challenge for most wineries, even for tasting room positions, uh, let alone hiring someone that will make, as Sonia said, hundreds of calls a day. Uh, we average about 150 to 200 phone calls a day. And uh, that's going to be your best option for the long term is hiring someone else to do it. Um, just to give you kind of some uh, a feedback on average order values, we have found that our average order value is consistently about two to three times what they are for other direct-to-consumer channels like tasting room and e-commerce. Our average order value across all brands in our uh, company is about $450. So, you know, if you compare it to a typical tasting room sale, it's probably 100 $150, $200, something like that. So you're going to make much bigger sales. Most people want to walk away with the tasting room with a bottle or two in their hands. Or as we're selling six packs at the absolute minimum, cases, couple cases. How about a case of Cabernet, case of Chardonnay? So it's multiple cases at a time. Thank you, Donnie. Those are impressive numbers. $450 uh, average order value. Uh, for Vino Pro uh, wine brands, yeah, that's really something to be said there. 150, 200 calls per day per brand that you're making on their behalf. So, I mean, dedicated, focused telesales experts on the phones doing the right thing. Um, and then something very impressive uh, that you mentioned also is that, you know, typically two to three times greater average order value than what we're seeing in the taste room and club. And that goes back, I believe, to what Sonia said earlier about the re-engagement opportunity. You've got, you know, brand loyalists already had the in-person experience, already excited about the brand, getting that call from the brand, and now re-engaging. Sonia also mentioned that they're seeing an increase in uh, club member signups thanks to Vino Pro Telesales. Do you want to touch on that as well? Yeah, so we actually do thousands of wine club signups every year for our partners. Um, and although we don't talk about any specific clients, uh, I can tell you that that is thousands of wine club signups that they would not have had otherwise. And I think the reason people are so surprised that we're able to sign up wine club members over the phone and without pouring any wine, there's nobody in front of us. There's nobody that, that you know, we're not, we're not doing tastings or anything like that, clearly. But we're talking about the benefits of joining the wine club over the phone. And I think it's about building a personal relationship with those guys over the phone as well. Rather than sending out, you know, promotional emails twice a month with, you know, X percentage off, we're having personal one-on-one -on -one conversations where we're actually saying, you know, hey, Jim, how's your summer? What kind of wines are you enjoying? How's your son's graduation? I mean, it's getting that to that level where we're building relationships over the phone. And I think that's why uh, we can sell so much more wine is because we're building those and maintaining those relationships over the phone that were started in the tasting room. Include the DTC case study number 10 here on the true ROI of a wine brand like Cornerstone Sellers using Vino Pro telesales services. Above and beyond the financial ROI, what about customer service, customer retention? How is the Vino Pro team assisting you with this big time of transition into new two new tasting rooms?
So they've been very good at messaging the, the timelines of the new tasting rooms opening up. So when they're talking to customers, they're getting them excited. They are actually booking tastings for me going into the fall now. So starting in August through the end of the year, I've been getting tastings. So that's great. They're already getting people seated in seats and um, I, I don't have to do anything, which is fantastic. I also think something else that we haven't touched on in this is the legality and one of the reasons why I prefer to outsource is that there are a lot of laws around telemarketing and there are a lot of complex systems and I know that I do not have the bandwidth to figure that out. Um, you know, Vina Pro has a massive technology team that does this and they understand all the laws, the rules, the regulations, the DNC call list. I think it's really important that you have somebody who, a partner that actually knows all these laws and can make sure that are protecting you. As we conclude our case study today, I would love to wrap up with any final words of wisdom each of you have for any wine round looking to um, outsource telesales. And let's start with Sonia. It's an important channel. I think do your homework, um, understand what your list looks like, make sure that you've got all your numbers, all your, um, how many club members you have, how many people you have in the system, be able to have a file that you can hand over to the team immediately so that they can, they can sit there and say, you know, we think we can do this. Um, be patient with the process. The first three months, um, Vino Pro's learning my brand and they're learning um, how my customers react to things. And so they're gonna kind of figure out what levers they have to pull in order to um, be the most successful they can. What works for one winery doesn't necessarily work for every winery. And then after three months, you know, sit down and say, okay, what tools can I give you to make sure that your team has what they need to sell? And then what do you, um, what do you need back from us? Wisdom, Sonia, thanks again for taking time out of your busy day, getting ready to open those two tasting rooms to share with our audience all that you've brought to the wine industry when it comes to telesales. So back over to you, Donnie, as we wrap up case study number 10 here, words of wisdom that you have for our audience. Yeah, I think making calls at any level is, is going to be your best option. And people don't always buy over email, right? Or going into the tasting room. A lot of customers will prefer buying over the phone, especially uh, older customers. They like the personal touch. They like the getting phone calls. Our DNC rate is one half of 1% meaning that one out of every 200 people will say, take me off the list, et cetera. And in any other industry where the telesales business, it's like 20 to 30% on the DNC rate. So people like getting calls from wineries and whether or not you're using me or you're using a different service or you're calling yourself, I highly recommend making phone calls. Building those relationships are going to help uh, keep your customers engaged and they're going to, you're actually going to extend the lifetime membership of, of that member. They're going to be in the club longer because they're getting personal attention uh, because you actually care about their drinking habits. And uh, the more you call, the more often you call, um, the more they're going to be engaged and the more money they're going to spend with your brand. Wonderful words of wisdom. I can't thank you enough for both, uh, both of you for what you do for the wine industry. This is a very important aspect of how we continue to build customer engagement uh, strategies, how we continue to foster relationships with our brand loyalists, and we couldn't do it without each of you. For those of you watching today's case study, you will find the DTC Wine Case Study Series at dtcwineworkshops.com. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Cheers.